All right, so okay, so students, we're going to talk about um, extrusive volcanic features here, right? And to highlight the extrusive volcanic features, I'm simply going to show you an eruption which took, which actually took place on the 20th of, 20th of October 2021 in Japan. All right, this is in fact Japan's largest volcano, which is um, situated in Mount. Some people say Mount Iso, some people say Mount Aso. Doesn't matter, right? So this is in fact the eruption which actually took place. Look at it. All right. Look at the degree of the eruption. Look at the height of that huge cloud of ash, of rocks becoming obliterated and basically destroyed. All right. By the magnanimous power of the volcanic eruption, by the pressure which is built up and released. Now, that is actually very terrifying, as a matter of fact. If you look at it from a different perspective, it is very unique. And these volcanoes are very, very powerful, as a matter of fact. All right. Now, look at that. Um, obviously, there's uh, a very powerful, a very massive eruption, and we can obviously take into consideration that the extrusive features would, in fact, be associated with molten materials as well as even the particulates of dust, or even the lava, or the cinder, which is, in fact, small fragments of rocks being on the surface of the earth. Extrusive features that we mentioned in class are, in fact, those which are simply created. Um, or exist on the surface of the earth, um, the earth which technically um, forms part of the, the land mass. All right. There are multiple um, features, extrusive features. We can range them from crater, caldera. We have fissures, lava plateau. You understand? We have parasitic cones. We have ash and cinder cones. We have shield volcanic cones. All right. So we're going to go through all of these things today, as a matter of fact. Okay? Okay, now every single volcano basically has um, a crater. All right? The crater is, in fact, the mouth of the volcano or the opening at the surface of the volcano where molten materials exit onto the surface. Obviously, the magma chamber is connected to the crater via the um, volcanic vent. But we're focusing on the actual um exclusive features per se so craters are in fact the mouths of uh, volcanoes where multi materials exit um now students bear in mind that the crater can actually be obliterated if a volcanic eruption is extremely destructive all right keep that in mind for me please all right sometimes you have these very very powerful eruptions which can simply blow off the upper part of the cone all right, and when that happens, this whole section can be blown off the surface of the earth. All right, so Krakatoa is a beautiful example um, associated with the top of the cone being blown off. Um, this volcano, which was a situated, which is situated in um, in Indonesia, all right, is actually a very very important one. Um, in the year 1883, this volcanic eruption was extremely explosive to the where the point where the top of the volcanic cone was literally blown off the surface of the earth eventually widening the crater. Now, students, what I'm trying to say here is that the actual mountain top was blown off the surface of the earth. That is a very magnanimous um, volcanic eruption, a very powerful volcanic eruption. And what happens is that when you have a widened crater, right, you call it a caldera, right? Now, Krakatoa is the original volcanic structure, but Anak Krakatoa, which means son of Krakatoa, is in fact what exists right now. And it's formed within this huge caldera region all right now calderas are in fact widened craters which are associated with very explosive volcanic eruptions due to the acid um lava which is simply spewed onto the surface and the, the great amount of pressure which is exhibited all right on the surface as a matter of fact all right in some instances class as you can see there is in fact a caldera within this particular cone which was created in the 1883 after the volcanic after after this particular volcano erupted but there are, in fact, other areas which simply have um, um, calderas as well. And looking closer towards the Caribbean, we have Gran Itang, right? National Park, which is situated in Grenada. All right, this particular area is, in fact, very, very unique, as a matter of fact. What happened is it basically is associated with um, a huge region, simply um, found primarily... Um, where there's a long lost volcano which is no longer there anymore. All right, this is the island of Grenada. All right, if you were to look deeper, um, we could actually see this particular area. There's a Grand Itang Lake, 
Now, students, look carefully at this particular region here. This Grand Itang Lake is essentially a caldera lake. Now, what happened is that the molten materials, um, with, after the volcanic cone was blown off the surface of the earth, the rock fragments eventually descended. They were airborne, of course, and they descended and they blocked the volcanic vent. And the molten materials um, eventually solidify with the existing rocks, um, eventually closing in the structure, eventually rainfalls and whatnot. And as you can see from the insert here, um, there is actually a, a depositional body of water which exists, all right, because of rainwater being collected within that widened rim. So the Granny Tang National Park, there is in fact a caldera lake situated right locally, well, regionally in our Caribbean region, specifically in Grenada, um, and is a very distinctive tourist destination as a matter of fact. All right, so let us look at the parasitic cone now. Now, students, Parasitic cone, obviously, just like a parasite, an endopar, an exoparasite, sorry, is situated in the outer flank of a, an organism. A parasitic cone is the term, it actually sort of gives us this understanding that it's situated, is a smaller structure situated in the outer flank of a volcano or a volcanic cone. Look at this, what's happening here right now. There is, in fact, a branch, right, or a secondary vent which deviates from this main vent, it deviates from the main vent and eventually flows through perhaps rocks and uh, weaknesses and exploits these little weaknesses in rocks and the molten materials eventually spew on the surface. As time progresses, this particular area for the molten materials solidify and harden, all right, to form a kind of small conal structure on the outer flank of a volcano. All right, so just remember parasitic cones are associated with um, uh, secondary vents created or diverted from the main channel or the main vent towards the outer flank of a volcano. Okay, so when there is in fact a eruption, you can actually see, be, see steam or perhaps molten materials um, spewing from these specific locations. All right, what you're looking here right now is in fact uh, a, a parasitic cone, which is here. Now this area looks like if it is gentle, but it's not. Um, this whole area is a very large spectrum that's sloping down. Now this parasitic cone is here basically um, it is a cone, which is created by, obviously, secondary events. Um, I believe this particular cone is actually associated in South Korea. Uh, many of the, the diagrams you will see on the screen, uh, and many images and whatnot, if you look at a particular search, the Jeju Islands in, um, Jeju Island, sorry, in South Korea has over 300 parasitic cones. And this is, in fact, an example right here on the screen. Now, um, let us look at ash and cinder cones. Ash and cinder cones are also known as um, composite cones or volcanic cones, right? Now, we call them ash and cinder cones, but in reality, we cannot forget lava, all right? And I always try to remind people about this, right? These are known as stratovolcanoes because they have different layers, different strata, all right? Now, class, look here. Let us see right here. Lava, cinder, and ash. Lava, cinder, and ash. Lava, cinder, and ash. The lava will be the first to actually be situated on the surface primarily because it is flowing. The cinder refers to small fragments of rocks and whatnot, which eventually is airborne, but will project back down to earth under the influence of gravity. And the ash, which is very unconsolidated, fine volcanic material, will take a longer period of time to settle. These three layers, lava, cinder, and ash, in this particular ascending order, will represent one or a singular volcanic eruption. All right, so this actually shows the multiple layers of ash, cinder, and also lava. All right, uh, multiple volcanoes are associated with this. For example, the Mount St. Helen volcano is in fact an ash and cinder cone, also known as a stratovolcano, all right, um, or composite cones, primarily because um, it is actually associated with very explosive volcanic eruptions, and it's very explosive to the point where you have acidic lava associated. Okay, so I want to talk about two things, fissures and lava plateau, right? Now, a fissure is, in fact, an opening on the surface of the, well, of the earth, right, or the crust, where molten materials will tend to rise up. Now, this type of lava, which is technically basaltic lava or very runny or very fluid lava, will eventually rise onto the surface and will eventually spread out. Now, with the progression of time, the spreading out of this particular structure eventually forms a pathway where it has a relatively flat surface, relatively, and have, it is actually suspended by very steep-sided slopes, but the surface is flat. Um, a plateau is typically associated with that, relatively flat surface bordered by steep-sided slopes. 
Um, so fissures are opening on the surface of openings on the surface of the land or the crust, which allows molten materials to rise. The molten material spread out over a very extensive area and eventually allows um, that cooling effect, which allows it to perhaps um, develop with uh, elevation and also it is bombarded by steep sided slopes. So keep that in mind. You, uh, what you are seeing on the screen here right now is what you call an Atrium Plateau or the Atrium Plateau in um, Northern Ireland, which is situated in the UK as a matter of fact, right? Look at the the relatively relatively flat surface, it's not 100% flat, but look at the relatively flat surface, but the steep sided structures to which border this particular plateau, okay? We also have different other examples such as Deccan Plateau in India as well. Okay, there are many all over the world. All right, remember we spoke about a, a fissure. Let's look at the surface of the earth. There are in fact little openings or cracks, and where the plate, the actual crust is eventually diverging at some point, or perhaps creating an opening because of weaknesses and all these things, right? And the molten materials will tend to breach through that. All right, this is in fact molten materials rising through a fissure, and a fissure is in fact an opening on the surface of the land created by um, stresses. All right, from the heat and the molten materials, of the molten materials, rather. All right, now look carefully at this particular diagram, right? It shows four different types of um, conal structures. Now, students, we have cinder cones, which are essentially um, those very steep-sided cones. The first three volcanic cones are relatively steep. Um, they have projectiles of rock somewhat and being um, um, exited out of a particular volcano. Composite cones are strata, strata, strata volcanoes. Um, they are composed of ash, cinder, and lava, and as a matter of fact, they are very, very distinctive. I have a general lava dome or whatever, but just focus on this last one for me, please. This was what I call a shield volcanic cone. Understand that a shield volcanic cone, it is in fact broader, all right, than all the other cones. Shield volcanic cones are relatively broad at the base. That means they are created by very runny lava, very basic lava which runs and spread out over extensive areas, all right? Um, also, the, the reason why it is not as steep is because of the fact that the molten materials would not cool quickly. It will take a relatively long time to cool in comparison to all of these three here. And as a matter of fact, it is very fluid-like. It is very runny. So basic lava is dominant associated with shield volcanic cones, all right? All right, so look at this image. The image on the top is actually a real picture. All right, look how broad it is. Look how extensive it is. This is a view from a very far distance. All right, look how the, the height or the elevation is not as steep, right, as the acid volcanoes or the acid lava volcanoes or the acid lava cones. These are, in fact, what you call basic lava cones or basaltic lava is, in fact, involved, which is very fluid, right, very runny. All right, and the explosions of these particular volcanic cones are very gentle in comparison to the acid lava domes. All right, um, shield volcanic cones are associated with very uh, milder um, eruptions in comparison because the basaltic lava possesses a lot less silica, and the explosion of that eruption is actually much less. Okay, but the lava is very runny; it spreads out over very extensive areas, as you can see from the image above, and also from the diagram below. And what happened is that the elevation is not as steep, okay? Class, you will find a lot of these shield volcanic cones in areas such as Hawaii. The entire Hawaiian islands, well, Hawaii is in fact what you call a hotspot, all right? And there's a slight slight breakage and weaknesses in the Earth's crust where molten materials are simply spewed onto the surface, all right? The Hawaiian islands is actually largely encompassed by shield volcanic cones, all right? Okay? All right, so students, I mentioned just now that many of these um, shield volcanic cones, all right, are in fact uh, associated with the um, the Hawaiian Islands, especially, right? A very distinctive one is what you call the um, the Kilauea volcano. Um, it is an active shield volcano, as a matter of fact, associated with um, well, found primarily in in Hawaii, right? And this is actually very very unique, as a matter of fact. Okay. And there is, in fact, a very distinctive volcanic code in this particular region. I'm just, just give me one minute, I'll show you quickly. All right, so as you can see on the screen here, it is very extensively broad. All right, it is very, very broad as a matter of fact, because the molten material is, in fact, very basic. All right, students, I hope this was actually very beneficial to you all. Any questions, feel free to ask, okay?